Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are talking about a ship that I have been told to play and to check out by so many people that I finally got around to getting in the ship and getting into battle with her, uh, I think about two weeks ago on one of the Friday Night Live streams, and that is the Otago, the Tier 8 Premium Japanese Heavy Cruiser. And fun fact, this is actually the very first tier 8 premium in the game, period. This is a ship that replaced the Kitakami back in, back in the day. And the Kitakami, I mean, there's been rumors about it coming out. It was announced, um, shoot, God, what, four or five months ago that Kitakami was returning as, I think, a tier 10 cruiser or, or destroyer. I don't exactly remember uh, what they classified it as because it's been that long and... It was in testing for a little while and then kind of disappeared. So maybe with friendly fire being removed, we might see the Kitakami coming back again. But anyway, the Otago is still here. And one of the oldest premiums in the game. A ship that is almost as old as the game itself. That's pretty crazy when you think about it. Especially considering how it's been performing for me. And as you can tell by the title of this video, this has been one of the best cruisers I have played in this game. Out of all of them, out of all the super cruisers, all the light cruisers, all the heavy cruisers, all the premiums, all the tech tree ships, this is one of the best. And it's one of the oldest, which is really, really, really interesting to look at because we have so many older premiums now that just after being released two years ago, they're far worse off than they were when they got released due to mechanics changes like the um, the IFHE rework or other reworks like the Commander rework or the CV rework or so forth and so on. But the Otago has stood the test of time. And I am really, really sad that it took me this long to actually play the ship. Now, I've actually had the ship, I think, for a little over two years now, if not longer. I got the ship... I can't exactly remember when. I believe it was one of the Santa Crate events where I actually picked up this ship. But I got the ship for free. I remember that. I have. I did not spend a dime getting this ship. It, I think I got it in one of the free Santa containers two years ago. It's like, oh, the Otago. That, that's, I've heard that's a good cruiser. I'll put that over there. And I never played it. Never touched it. But then again, you guys kept saying, hey, check out the Otago. Do you have the Otago? Can you play the Otago? And I did, and boy, oh boy, what a ship this is. And just out the gate here, like I said in my Tone review, I was 99% sure that the Otago was a better ship than the Tone, even though I hadn't played the Otago. I, it, it is. It is a thousand percent better than the Tone. And this ship, it, it's so much fun to play too, which is very weird coming from me because I am a battleship main, I, and I do like cruisers. But I like large, heavy cruisers like the Stalingrad and the um, the Mosva, the Hindenburg. You know, big ships that are pretty similar to battleships. Although the Hindenburg's kind of more like a cracked out Mainz now with the commander rework. But the Otago is very nimble. She's very slim, as you can see here. Her range isn't even that great. It's only got a 15.7 kilometer uh, maximum range on her, at least with the build that I have, and. You would think that's that's like a death sentence for a cruiser now, only having a 15 kilometer range, especially being a tier 8 cruiser. But no, this ship does fantastically well. She has a great concealment range of 9.3 kilometers, which, funnily enough, gives you a 700 meter stealth firing area for your torpedoes, which, I mean, you don't do a lot of stealth firing with a gap that small, but the, the amount of times these torpedoes have connected for me is pretty entertaining. And her guns are uh, amazing. She has 10 uh, 230 millimeter guns, not 530 millimeter guns. That'd be something. Um, they reload in 16 seconds with the build that I have on her, and they are insanely accurate. The maximum dispersion is only 124 meters, and the accuracy on these guns gives the Zhao a good run for its money. It's so accurate that I find myself missing a lot of times because. I'll aim just like a little bit off to the left or to the right, where on a normal cruiser that really wouldn't matter because your dispersion would still pretty much coat the ship in your shells. But the Otago's like, no, I'm going to send all your shells to that pixel, bruh. 
that that's how accurate these guns are. As I, I'm sure you can tell by the footage behind me. Also, the foot footage behind me, the footage you're watching right now. Um, this isn't my my highest damage game in the Otago by far, but it was a pretty entertaining game considering all what happened in it. As I'm sure you've probably seen some of the highlights already. Um, but yeah, she has those two hundred three, two hundred three millimeter guns with that wonderful Japanese HE. The fire chance and the alpha got an 18% fire chance on her right now, and of course you get that wonderful, wonderful Japanese HE alpha, which until the British heavy cruisers got in the game was some of the best, and it still is very good. It still is very good HE alpha. The Japanese cruisers still have some fantastic HE. If you like burning the world down and don't like the British, you can take the Japanese cruisers. It'd be just fine there too as well. And her torpedoes, like I mentioned before, these torpedoes are surprisingly quite useful. Uh, she gets 16 of the 610 millimeter torps. They have a range of 10 kilometers, like I mentioned earlier. They travel at 62 knots. They load in 101 seconds. They have a maximum damage of 19,808. And yeah, if you catch a DD with one of these, which I've done several times, again, much to my own amusement, uh, they, they tend to just die. So that's <laughs> nice too. And the rudder shift time, like I mentioned earlier, the ship is incredibly nimble. Well, first off, before we get to the rudder shift time, she goes almost 40 knots. She goes 37.3 .3 knots. And with the build that I have on her with the rudder mods, she has a 6.5 second rudder shift time, which that's without steering gears mod 2. If I would take steering gears mod 2 on this ship, this thing would have a 3, hold up, a yes, a 3.9 second rudder shift time. So a 3 second rudder shift time on a heavy cruiser. That is absolutely mental but i like to take the um the concealment module just because it gives me a lot more cushion with the shorter range of the otago and plus it is incredibly useful to just again like i've mentioned before like i think i mentioned this in the constellation review the other day to have the ability to just go no i, I don't i don't want to fight you anymore and just go undetected because no cruisers not no cruisers no destroyers gonna want to chill within 10 kilometers of an otago because one, your HG just rips them apart and has a fast enough fire rate to where you can just tear them up. Two, the thing does have hydroacoustic search, so you can easily just ruin their day, you know, ruin their torch by spotting them and such. And three, this is a, quite a tanky ship, surprisingly so. I, like I mentioned at the start of this video, on Battleship Main, I've detonated or just outright deleted many in, in Otago. However, th those Otagos apparently did not know how to use their rudders. Boy, when you use your rudder in this ship, you can survive for a very, very, very long time while continuing to just pester the enemy with your wonderful HE and fire chance. So, yeah, that's the basics of the Otago and the characteristics of the Otago. So how have I been faring in the ship? Well, if you can't tell by my tone, um, very, very well. Again, surprisingly well. This ship is just a tremendous amount of fun to play. I love the playstyle of always being on the move and playing with your rudder a lot and dodging incoming shells, like I mentioned in my constellation video from uh, from, from 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 Saturday. And the Otago is that in cruiser form, and it does it so fantastically well. well. All while the same time being a very forgiving cruiser too. You have a heel, and that heel. I mean, again, this is a wonderful cruiser for a first-time cruiser player. That heel can get you out of so many bad situations. Now, of course, too, the armor, it's its great and it's not great. First off, you do have a 41mm deck armor on a tier 8 cruiser, which is just a giant middle finger to a, a good portion of battleship shells. But other than that, it is, of course, the IJN cruiser armor. And if anyone who's, who's played IJN cruisers, who were, were shot at IJN cruisers, know that you know sometimes you, you, you hit them in, like, the, the propeller shaft mount, and they just explode. It's weird like that. It's kind of like the hipper. You know, the hipper, you can hit the, uh, you hit the radar, and suddenly the ship just explodes. That does happen sometimes with the Otago. Um, although not too much... In my playing of her over the past couple of weeks, I have played this ship quite a lot. Now, granted, with the way matchmaking's been, for me at least, and I know a lot of you said it's been the same way for you for you guys, where you get into matches that where a lot of them barely go past the the, uh, the the six or seven minute mark. Yeah, the damage isn't really there, but when you do get those games, they do go past the six minute mark and make it to the 10, 12, or 13, or the rare game nowadays that, make it, that makes it to the full 20 minute mark, it's quite easy to get quite a fair bit of damage in the Otago, and with the Otago, I've been f placing, you know, first, second, third, fourth, 
for just about every match that I've had in her. You know, a couple of matches where I do goof up and get smacked at the beginning of the match, yeah, you know, toward the bottom of the scoreboard. Not saying I'm coming to the top of the scoreboard every time with the Otago, but when I manage to stay alive and do Otago things, it's quite a good cru cruiser. Excellent DD Hunter, excellent damage farmer. Um, not the best against other cruisers because their AP is pretty lacking. But that's kind of general of most of the Japanese cruisers. AP really isn't their strong suit. Now, if you catch something broadside, like completely flat, uh, flat broadside, yeah, you're, you're going to punch the crap out of them. But the second they slightly angle, you might as well switch back to HE because your HE alpha is just so much better than the AP on this ship. And that's good. The ship's balanced. It's, it's not overpowered. Like, everything that I've mentioned in here has a counter to it. It's got a heal, but it's got crappy armor. It's got... Great maneuverability, but doesn't have the best range. The guns are very accurate, but it still does have a 16 second load time. So forth and so on. It's a very well balanced, very well designed cruiser that has aged like fine wine and still is able to keep in the fight today in today's battles. Which that says, again, so much about this ship that it is still relevant today and you still see this ship being played today. There are some premiums that have come out in the past six or seven months that you don't see barely any of them in the game anymore because either they got power crept they weren't really well designed or they just weren't good in the first place but even some premiums that were held as you know great and awesome a year ago no one plays them anymore but the otago is still here she stood the test of time and i am so sorry that it's taken me so long to get to the ship guys but again this is a fantastic ship and if you're thinking about getting an IJN cruiser, you're thinking about getting the Tone or any of the newer ones, I'd say just get the Otago while she's still available. And considering she's been available since literally pretty much day one of the game, I don't think they'll pull her anytime soon, but she's a fantastic ship. If you haven't picked her up yet, I would recommend picking her up, especially if you're a cruiser player or someone who's looking at getting into cruisers. And again, with the way that she's set up and stuff, she doesn't play different from any of the other IJN cruisers. I went down that line. Uh, in, in my hypercrine video and I played her just like I played them she does fantastically well so you can use this as a fantastic IJN uh, trainer for well for your cruiser captains your destroyer captains and your battleship ca captains now because of the way the commander rework works but she is definitely well worth the money and again a ship that has stood the test of time all right guys I just want to share my thoughts and opinions on the Otago after having played her for the last couple of weeks with you guys let me know what you guys think in the comments down below Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all had a wonderful 4th of July weekend and all of you made it back with all your, with all 10 of your fingers. So again, guys, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're on our way now to 30,000 subs, just past 27,000 subs. Actually, today on the 4th of July, as I'm recording this, and huge thank you to you guys for that. So again, guys, hope you guys have a wonderful Monday. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.